Hello, beloved of God. This is Pastor Lydia Paulsalt. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And it's time for another Friday staff devotion. So welcome and thank you for joining us today. I am with you today in a very special location in my quite empty, brand spanking new office, home office in the home that my husband and I just recently purchased. So we are excited to be able to share the news that we now live in Reston in our now permanent address and we are very excited to put our house together and I'm excited to put more things in my office but for now some of the basics are here. I've got my computer, my chair, my desk, the internet, all of the necessities. Um, so this is a bit of a different location, but it's where we are going to be. So uh, we are super excited and wanted to share that with all of you. For our devotion for today, I wanted to share with you, if you have been reading through a story to tell, which is from Augsburg Fortress, a devotional that maybe you were able to pick up and use during the season of Lent. It takes snippets from the Gospel of Mark and pairs them with uh, various devotions and prayers. And I was actually privileged to be able to write a few of them March 12th through the 22nd are the devotions that I have written and I hope you've been enjoying them. So for today, I'm going to be sharing what I have shared in that devotional. So there's a couple of different parts uh, for each of these days. First is a um, snippet from the Gospel of Mark. There is a quote from a book or a poem or something to pair with uh, the scripture, there is a little bit of a reflection, and then we will end with a prayer. And I might add a little bit uh, and riff off of this uh, as well. Um, I actually wrote these about a year ago, um, right around this time, which is really interesting to think about being in that headspace because we are over just over a year into this um, the hard part of this coronavirus pandemic and not really sure what sort of world we would be living in on the flip side a year from now. I think when I was writing these, I was definitely expecting things to be a little bit more in the past than they actually are, but hopefully you've been finding meaning in these devotions anyway. And so for today, actually, our snippet from Mark comes from chapter 11, verses 7 through 10, which happens to be the telling of Palm Sunday, which is actually appropriate because in just over a week from now, from when you are watching this, it actually will be Palm Sunday, which of course, as you know, is the beginning of Holy Week, the most sacred week in the year that we have um, that we hold as Christians. So from the Gospel of Mark. Then the disciples brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So hopefully that sounded a little bit familiar. The quote that I chose for this particular day comes from Rosella Haiti White's book, Big Love, which can be found uh, at Broadleaf. Uh, it was published by Broadleaf Press, which is actually one of the publishing houses of the ELCA. And I read this book about two years ago and I highly recommend it. But the quote that I chose to pair with goes like this. Waking up can be a jarring experience. Think of the loud clanging alarm clock that goes off while you are in dreamland. You come two with a jolt that rocks you and leaves your heart racing. It can be a struggle to get your bearings. You search for something or someone that grounds you. And we all have a choice, either to hit the snooze button or 
to wake up. I feel like that quote is particularly relevant now that um, just under a week ago we had daylight savings time and I think a few of us, maybe myself included, set a spare alarm clock just in case uh, our phones didn't do the correct thing. So that seemed particularly relevant. So this is what I wrote a year ago about Palm Sunday. It all began with such high hopes. Jesus entered Jerusalem in a parade, leaves flying, people singing and shouting, and a donkey braying in protest. And it's no wonder there was a parade, for the people had seen some amazing things from Jesus in the last three years. He had healed people with skin diseases and people who had been paralyzed. He had calmed storms and cast out demons. He had fed thousands and told about God's amazing love for wayward people. This is how Holy Week starts. It's a week when time doesn't behave properly, opening with a parade and ending with an execution. It's a time when a crowd shouts hosannas one minute and crucify him the next when bread becomes Jesus's body and wine becomes his blood, when a criminal is pardoned and an innocent man dies, when a king is killed for not being the right kind of king, when disciples deny and run away scared, and women and soldiers stand witness at Jesus's death. So even though we are getting this reading a little bit early uh, in this devotional book. We're not quite at Holy Week yet. This is the moment, the week that all of Lent has been leading up to. It's time for Jesus to arrive in Jerusalem, to be in this parade, to be celebrated by the people as their liberator. And then we all know how this week is going to end. It's going to end with the cross. But that's not where it finally ends. We all know that it ends with the empty tomb and the resurrection. So that is what we know is coming at the end of Lent, at the end of Holy Week. And we know that that gives us hope for our lives right now as we are facing some still some pretty difficult times and a lot of changes and a lot of things we're still going to have to face going forward. But we know that Jesus has walked through a lot of stuff and will continue to walk with us as well. So let's end our time with prayer. Let us pray. Holy Jesus, may we stand witness to your kingdom as it arrives in our lives. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.